Hello, this letter that you're looking at is the award letter of one of the subscribers from this YouTube channel. So last December, I got a fully funded scholarship, he or her, I'm not very sure of the gender, <laughs> to be honest. Got a fully funded scholarship at the University of Melbourne in Australia. And this is what the scholarship covers. As you can see, stipend, you can see relocation allowance of actually 3,000 if you're outside Australia and 2,000 within Australia and then overseas health cover. So fully funded tuition is covered already if it's a master's two years or PhD four years, stipend, relocation allowance and overseas insurance. So this is the scholarship we're looking at today. Fully funded master's and PhD at the University of Melbourne. So welcome to my YouTube channel. It is Victor once again. It's another day and we have another scholarship. So if you're joining us for the first time, you're welcome. But where have you been? There are lots of videos already on this channel on fully funded scholarships from around the world. So look around. I'm sure you'll find something that catches your interest. And if you're a returning viewer, a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back. Thanks for the constant support. And I hope you get a scholarship sooner than later. So let's go into the business of the day. So this is where we're starting from. And this is the University of Melbourne. And we're looking at the research training program, ROTP. If you are a returning viewer on this channel, probably you already know about the scholarship. It is present in a number of Australian universities. So you can just go on Google and type ROTP Australia. And then you get several Australian universities offering the scholarship. However, they have they might have different application requirements, different deadlines and opening windows. So you have to be careful about that and check the different university arrangements. But for Melbourne, I'm happy to announce that it is open and it is very generous. Both for domestic and international students. So you get your tuition totally covered. And if the whole package is about 125000 very generous. And um, we could see more of the benefits here. Just as we saw on that application or that award of um, that award of a scholarship, you can see here that it covers if you're living stipend of 37000 It covers um, relocation grants for those coming from outside Australia, 3,000, for those within Australia, 2,000, and international or overseas student insurance. So you get everything covered through and through. When you get this, you don't have to bother about anything. Just appear in the airport and, you know, with your bags and your brain, and you'll be good to go. Another amazing thing about this scholarship at this university is that there are 350 spots 350 spots, that's a large number. It means it's going to be a very large intake. I might just be lucky. That might just be you among the very large um, intake. So how do you apply? Let's go to the head of the page. It says here that no application required. What does that mean? It means that you simply apply for admissions, one of the eligible courses, and then you're automatically considered for a scholarship. As you can see here, application status, open for automatic consideration. So you just apply and then if your application is strong enough, you are awarded the scholarship. There is no different application process. So now I'll talk you through how to apply in the first place. So as the title connotes, this is a research training program. So it means the courses you're coming to do here are like research intensive courses. So you're only applying for either a PhD, which is already research intensive, or a master's by research. There's a difference between a normal master's, coursework master's, and master's by research. This scholarship only covers master's by research and PhD. So you can see it here, graduate research. Those are the courses you'll be going for. PhD or Master's by Research. 
So let's see, let's click on them and see. Um, let's go back to so this is the main page. Let's see. Um, any link taking us of course you can always um read through the terms and conditions on your own. I just want to show you how to apply directly for the scholarship. So let's go to the different graduate research courses I just talked about. So graduate research courses. So this is where, in case you didn't see where I clicked on, I clicked on this link, how to apply. You can even open this on another tab to make it clearer. So that's it. And then graduate research, we're going to international applications. And then some details about application requirements, or entry requirements, applications, enrollment, and the rest of them. So just scroll down, might get the full gist, or I think click on one of the tabs rather. So we'll click on applications and now the step by step how to go about the application. So these are the different categories of the research courses we talked about. Um, a PhD, Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor by Research, Master of Philosophy or Master or masters by research. These are the courses eligible. We'll check the course page soon. Let me just talk you through the application process quickly or the documents you need to put together. Do not worry about the fees, you're not paying any fees because you're getting um you're getting a scholarship. So the documents you need to put together like your CV, your transcript, those are compulsory, things like um they call them um reference letters. For some quantitative courses, you might, they might ask you to submit like GRE. This is not for every course, but for, for some specialist courses. They might ask for writing samples. So it depends on the different department variations. We'll be checking that together shortly to know what your department requires. So academic transcript that's given already, references. Publications, this is also optional depending on whether your department is required for it or not. So if you're required to submit one, um, try to put something forward. But they said here that do not submit an article that has not been published or accepted for publication. So submit only those that have been accepted for publication. And as I said, it is not compulsory to have a publication. Accept your course, says otherwise. Talking about what is compulsory, it is compulsory for a number of courses to find an academic supervisor. Since the course you're coming to study is research intensive, you need an expert in the field to hold your hand and to supervise you. So you have to find a supervisor even before you proceed with your application. In most of these research scholarships in Australia, you can hardly be taken seriously if you do not have the backing of a supervisor. So you need like a form where the supervisor has attested that they are going to supervise your work. And I think there's a form here actually that says that. So it means you have to contact somebody in the department that works in the area you're interested in. Tell them you're interested in studying in that university. Tell them you want to work under them as their supervisee. And tell them that you need like a formal um, assent from them, a support letter from them saying that they want to support your application. Interestingly, a number of people here have actually gotten responses from supervisors from Australia. It's often said that Australian supervisors are very slow to answer. But interestingly, I think I've heard from two, three people on this channel who have gotten responses from supervisors from Australia universities that we talked about like two, three weeks ago. So that's good news. So do not do not give up. Keep contacting those um, supervisors. So there are lots of other things you can do here. Let's go to the course page, the different courses. So this is the course page and remember to choose graduate research, not coursework. Coursework is like the normal masters. You apply for this, no scholarship for you. In fact, you might even run into lots of um, roadblocks. They might even send you to an agent or something. But this is the one you're applying for, graduate research. So click on it. You can also click on the different fields depending on the one you're interested in. So let's click on agriculture and veterinary science. So these are the courses under veterinary science and agriculture. 
So I can use this one for an example. Master of Philosophy, that's MPhil. Um, it's a Master's by Research as well. As you can see, recognize Master's by Research, Agricultural Science. So let's open this and see what it entails. So two years Master's on campus, um, Intech is flexible. We'll be looking at the English language requirements subsequently. These are the fees, but remember you're going to get a scholarship, so do not worry about the fees. Of course, read other details about the, what the department is all about. And then, um, entry requirements. Let's go to entry requirements and see what they require. So it's a normal four-year bachelor's degree in a relevant field, or if you have a master's already, that's also good. Or oh, qualifying um, professional experience is also good. Um, as we also said earlier, you would need the endorsement of a supervisor. You need the endorsement of a supervisor before you can apply. Remember, we saw it on that general page. Now we'll come to the particular page of agricultural size, and they said yes. To apply, you need um you need a supervisor to apply. So this is important. Try to get this document as soon as you can. There was a place they mentioned English language requirements. Um, I think it was somewhere up here. Yes, English language requirements. Let's see what they require for the English language proficiency. Okay. So you have the normal and what they call it. Let's go there and see, where is it? It just took us back to this page. Let's see if we see, get more information about the English requirements. Okay, it's at the bottom of the page. Let's see, English language requirements. We just want to make sure we don't have to write any of those IELTS or TOEFL, or if we can just get a waiver. So these are those exams I talked about, IS TOEFL. If you can write them, it's always a good thing. But the reason why I often skip them is that these exams are expensive, they take a lot of time. But if you can write them and you pass very well, it's often a good thing, it boosts your application. So if you have the money, you have the time, please do take these exams. Do not mind that I tend to skip them in a number of my videos. If you can write them, write them. And if you pass them very well, it puts you in front of there. They put you in front of the line most of the time. So things like GRE, the IELTS, TOEFL, if you have time, please write them. It's always a good thing. But I'm just saying, in case it's difficult, you do not have the funds, these are expensive, take a lot of time. I'll just show you like shortcuts, things you can do. So let's scroll down a little. There are ways you can get a waiver. And you talk about people who have studied already in the English language in different countries. So you can scroll down and see if you can get exemptions. A number of people who have studied already in the English language might, um, might be exempted. So those who studied like in other countries, like I'm Nigerian for instance, and I've studied in the English language all my life. So I don't think I should be writing an English language test. No. So these are the different alternatives. You can always check if there is a waiver for those who are from overseas university, authorized overseas university. I think it's often a good thing to have a letter from your school saying, hey, I studied in the English language um, all through my academic year and um, I do not need, um, I or I ask for a waiver, I ask for the English language requirement to be waived for my, um, because I already studied in the English language. Yeah. So we shouldn't overbid that issue. You can get a waiver, just get proof that you've already studied in the English language. So this is for, um, we checked for masters in, masters by research in agricultural sciences. Of course, go to your own course and see there are different applications requirements. And remember, you need to contact a supervisor. There is already a video on this channel on how to contact a supervisor. Probably leave a link to that video in the description box of this one. So you know how to write the letter. It's often a good thing to attach your CV and your transcripts to the email you send in to the supervisor. It shows you're serious, it shows your, your documents are ready and you're good to go. 
And when that is ready, if you get the approval of a supervisor, and then of course you can just go and apply directly, you know, go to how to apply and then apply directly and nobody disturbs you. But remember, you need that approval before you can proceed. It's very important. So I hope this was useful, guys. Fully funded master's by research and PhD in Australia, Melbourne University. Someone from this channel won it last time, as I said. You can see someone jubilating when you won it last time, last December. It might just be you. It might just be the one celebrating by the end of this year that you won the award. So do not give up. Start, get to work. And of course, there are several other videos on this channel on fully funded scholarships from around the world. So take a look at them as well and you can apply for multiple scholarships, as many as possible. And I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now and do not forget to subscribe if you've not already. Cheers.